PC, accounting for your future. Hi, welcome. My name is Steve from APC. Now let's look at the latest accounting standard related to revenue recognition, which is the IFRS number 15, revenue from contracts with customers. So in this particular uh, latest accounting standard, we're going to divide the section into two. The first part is I'm going to give you an overall example related to IFRS number 15 of how we're going to recognise the revenue. Uh, either we're going to use the IS number 18, the old accounting standard for revenue recognition, as well as the latest accounting standard, which is for IFRS number 15. And the second part of this video is going to detail the five-step model that is given by the IFRS number 15. So um, the IFRS number 15 uh, is to be effective or compulsory on 1st January 2017. Of course, maybe the ISM, ISB uh, would delay that implementation of the accounting standards for IFRS number 15 as well. Um, so the IFRS number 15 is developed based upon the uh, convergence between the international financial reporting standard and the US GAAP. Uh, because, I mean, we can see that there will be lots of these accounting standards detailing the revenue recognition. And the way they deal with those revenue recognitions are quite different. So that's the reason why uh, we are going to create the one-stop shop to combine those uh, revenue recognition uh, principles or rules into this five steps model. Uh, so that's the reason why we're going to apply for it. And of course, you can have the early adoption option uh, to adopt the IFRS number 15, but it will be compulsory to be adopted on 1st January 2017. So first of all, let me detail the five-step model that is given by the IFRS number 15, so to see how we're going to recognise the revenue based upon this new accounting standard. So we are going to use mnemonics for this. Of course, we've got lots of mnemonics in the course. It's called COLPA. So if you use the word COLPA, so those are the five steps they're going to use to uh, recognise the revenue and the new accounting standard. So first of all, you need to identify the contract, which means there will be some of the characteristics uh, defining the contract that is within the IFRS number 15. So you have to watch out. And any of this modification of the contract, which means we're going to modify the terms and conditions within there, needs to be dealt with appropriately under this new accounting standard. So after we identify the contract, we need to identify the performance obligation, which means within the contract, for example, for the telecommunication industry, not only going to provide the free of charge mobile phone, or maybe going to provide, uh, I mean, the discounted price for each of these mon monthly rates that you're going to pay for to a telecommunication in, uh, company. Alternatively, for the high-tech industry, it's not only going to sell the uh, software to the clients or customers, but also going to provide for some of the maintenance or repairment uh, services after the sale as well. So you need to identify those obligations so that you can uh, uh, determine, uh, I mean, uh, whether or not uh, the selling price is correct or the revenue is correct to be uh, recognised for these of the, uh, I mean, all of these uh, performance obligations later on. And the step three then is the we're going to determine the transaction price. So some, uh, in some of the circumstances, we're going to use the expected value method to determine that transaction price. So we're going to use the weight average method to do that. Of course, we're going to see a huge example related to that in the second part of this uh, course. And once we've determined the transaction price, the number four then, is we're going to allocate that price to each of these performance obligations that we have seen in the step two. That means step one is we're going to look at the contract. Step two is we're going to identify the obligations in there. Step three, determine the selling price. And step four, we're going to spread that selling price or transaction price into those performance obligations. Either it will be explicit obligations or implicit obligations. Of course, we're going to detail that when it comes to it. So after we allocated it, of course, the final step is we're going to recognise the revenue. So we're going to ask the sales a question. Either we're going to recognise the revenue at a point in time or we're going to recognise the revenue over the period or over the life of a contract. And surely this would depend upon the concept called control. So 
if the goods or services, I mean, the seller has passed the control of that goods or services to a customer at a point in time, surely we're going to recognise the sales revenue at a point in time. Otherwise, we're going to recognise the sales revenue over the period. And of course, it will be quite similar to what we've seen in the item number 18, because we also talked about the concept called services. So for example, if you buy the courses here for the APC, so APC will receive the cash in immediately, and we're going to spread that cash uh, to recognise the revenue in the subsequent period as we provide the services to you. So that's the same logic behind it, but slightly different. Of course, we're going to see that when we come to it. But the basic idea is just to be very, very straightforward, is we're going to use COPA, and we identify the contract with the obligations in there, and we're going to spread that uh, transaction price into those obligations so that we can recognise the revenue correspondingly. So that's how we do it. So let's see this particular example to see how we're going to uh, use this five-step model to recognise the sales revenue under the new accounting standard and compare that with the uh, old accounting standards, which is IS number 18 as well. So first of all, let's say this example is called Errant and Tele PLC. So of course, the IFRS number 15 is coming to being and it has affected the telecommunication industry quite a lot um, and also it has uh, affected the manufacturers quite a lot to uh, recognise, I mean, the sales revenue as well as associated costs as well. So, I mean, for the construction contract, as we've seen in the IS number 11, of course, uh, in the IFRS number 15, it's just to develop, uh, I mean, just to improve those uh, areas based upon the IS number 11 as well. It also has affected uh, for the high-tech industries quite a lot. So we're going to see those, uh, I mean, uh, examples when it comes to it. So now let's see how we're going to deal with this. So how should the tele PLC recognise the revenue from this, uh, from this plan in line with the IS number 18 as well as the IFRS number 15? So let's read the scenario then. So Aaron enters into a 12 months tele uh, telecom uh, plan with the local mobile operator. It's called tele PLC. The terms of the plan are as follows. So Aaron's monthly fixed fee is to be $100 per month. Secondly, the errands receives a free of charge handset at the start of the plan. So that means uh, Aaron receives a free mobile phone at the start of the plan. So it's fine. That's absolutely good. So uh, TelePLC sells the same handset for three hundred dollars. In the uh, I mean normally to the customers, and the same monthly prepayment plans. We found the mobile phone is just to be eighty dollars per month. So as a result of it, so. Under the IS number 18, revenue recognition, if the mobile phone has been uh, delivered to Aaron, who's the customer, uh, but in this case, under the IS number 18, uh, I mean, we can, I mean, practically speaking, we normally cheat this free of charge handset as the marketing cost. So that means, for example, uh, we, I mean, the cost for the mobile phone is just to be, let's say, $30. So what the company should do in its financial statements is to debit the uh, marketing expense and create the cash of $30 for the cost of its mobile phone, which is free of charge. Despite its same price, it's just to be $300. So, uh, I mean, yeah, that's for the free of charge uh, mobile phone. And I mean, for the IS number 18. So what IS number 18 actually does is this. So if you pay for $100 per month, so that we debit the cash of $100, and we credit the revenue for $100 for each month. So, uh, I mean, as the tele PLC has received the money from Aaron, for example, so we're going to debit the cash and credit the revenue. Job done. That's for the IS number 18. So, as you can see, uh, as the, I mean, 
the latest accounting standards for the IFR to move T has come into being. Of course, it will affect quite lots of things. For example, it will affect the total revenue that you're going to recognise. It will affect the tax paid. It will affect the profit. It will affect the dividend paid as well. So we're going to explain that in a second. So now let's see how we're going to recognise this revenue under the IFR to move T for this particular question. So step one is the contract identification. So that means it's C. And of course the contract, of course, in this case, Aaron will first of all receive the free handset. And secondly, monthly payment. So the monthly payment in this case is to be $100 compared to $80 without the free of charge handset. But Aaron, of course, is going to pay for $100 per month. So that's the step one. This will identify the contract. And step two then is we're going to identify the obligation which is the second note, obligation or performance obligation identification. So the obligation signed within the contract, first of all, I mean for the tele PLC, for example, is firstly, deliver the free handset to Aaron and also provide the network service to Aaron as well. Okay, so that's the step two. So we identify those performance obligations, absolutely great. So because what we need to do is we're going to determine the transaction price and we're going to spread uh, through those obligations that we just identified in step two. So now let's look at the step three. The price for the transaction. So let's see how we're going to determine the price then for the transaction. So in this case, of course, we are told that the price for the handset is free of charge. So the price is to be zero. And because of its contract, Aaron is required to pay $100 per month. So 12 months times $100 per month. So that would give us $1,200 in total. So the total transaction price as a result from this contract is to be a total of $1,200. So Because zero for the handset and a hundred dollars per month times twelve months. Okay, so that will give us a thousand two hundred dollars. So after that, then step four is the allocation of the transaction price. over the performance obligation. Which is A, right? So let's see how we're going to do this then. Uh, of course, within the IFRS number 15, we introduced the concept called standalone selling price, which is the normal price that you charge to a customer in the marketplace. So in this case, we are told if you sell those products alone, you will charge the handset for $300 in the marketplace to normal customers. And without the handset plan, the customers are only required to pay $80 in total. And as a result of it, the standalone price, first of all, we got the handset for $300 and for these 
network surveys is to be 12 months times $80 per month. So that would give us 960. So the total is to be 1,260 here. So based upon the standalone selling price, we're going to spread that okay, uh, over the performance obligation. So let's see what is the proportion of the standalone selling price then. So in this case, we take 300 divided by 1,260. So that gives us 23.8%. And then 960 divided by 1,260. So that would give us 76.2%. So based upon this percentage, now we're going to allocate to the transaction price within that particular contract of 1,200. So we're going to say that well, 1,200 because we got the performance obligation, first of all, related to handset. So how much revenues that we need to allocate to the handset, okay, based upon the standalone selling price. So let's see then. So the actual price in this case, a total is to be 1,200. So that's based upon the contract price within particularly for the step number two and step number three. So first of all, we're gonna say that, well, how much that we're gonna recognize here for the handset for the revenue is we're gonna take 28.3%, at 23.8%, times 1,200, so that will give us 286. And then 76.2% times 1,200, so that will give us 914. So that's the reason why we're gonna recognize the revenue for this two and total at 1,200, simple as this. So after that then, so it's the step number five, is we're going to recognize the revenue. So how are we going to recognize the revenue then? So because we've got two performance obligations here, so first of all, in the handset, is delivered to a customer. So because the handset is delivered to a customer, so what we need to do is we're going to recognize the sales revenue of 286. So debit, the contract asset. So this is the new terminology that is uh, within the IFR system of 15. So all that I mean by contract asset is like the receivable. But because that we send the handset free of charge to a customer, so we haven't invoiced the customers yet. That's the reason why we, rather than debiting the receivable, we debit the contract asset, uh, which is worth at 286, and we credit the revenue, 286. It's simply because um, after we deliver the handset, of course the handset is used by the customers already, so to obtain future economic benefits, for example. So rather than recognise the revenue throughout the life of a contract, but we're going to recognise the revenue at, this, at the point in time that we deliver the handset to a customer. Okay, so that's the first one. So secondly, we're going to recognise the service income. So, as you can remember from the step number four, the service income in total is to be 914. It's related to 12 months. So, what is the, uh, I mean, uh, income that we're going to recognize in each and every month? Of course, we're going to divide by 12, yeah? So, rather than using, uh, I mean, 1200 divided by 12, such as what we've seen in the item number 18, Rather, we're going to use 914 divided by 12. Okay, so that's how we do it. So, of course, as you can see, each month sales revenue will be quite different, okay, from these two accounting standards. So, we're going to recognize the service income. So, we debit and credit. So, first of all, we're going to credit the revenue. 
we're going to take uh, 940 divided by 12 months. So that would give us $76. So, and at the same time, so we're going to credit the contract assets that we just identified or recognized before. Uh, the contract assets, as you can see, the uh, first four. The handset is delivered. We debit the contract asset of 286. We need to uh, reverse it back uh, as we uh, provide the services later on. So, because we delivered the handset to you, so that you have to pay for me, for example. So if it is if the plans without the handset, you're going to pay for me 80. But if the plans with the handset, you're going to pay for me 100 dollars each new month. So that means by delivering the handset to you. To me, that's the asset because you are required to pay for me twenty dollars more than the normal customers, and as a result of it, as the uh, service period has passed, uh, for example, one year has gone, so we're going to reduce that contract asset because we got, uh, for example, um, I mean, for example, as one month has gone, so that we have only eleven months, and um, I mean, subsequently, so we can receive a hundred dollars from you. So each and every month. So that's the reason why we they've created the contract asset down by taking a total of 286 that we just recognized, divide by 12 months in each and every month. So that would give us $24. And as a result of it, we debit the receivable I should have received from you of $100. So when I received the cash from you, so that we created the receivable. So when receive cash we credit the receivable worth of a hundred dollars and we debit cash worth a hundred dollars okay so that's all we need to do recap what we have done today is we've looked at this big example or small example I should say it's the Aaron and Tele PLC it's about the telecommunication industry it's how we apply this five steps models into recognizing the sales revenue. So just to recap, so we use the uh, COPA mnemonic. So first of all, we identify the contract and secondly for the obligations in there. And thirdly, determine this uh, transaction price. In this case, is 1,200 here. And uh, how we're gonna spread that 1,200 of the transaction price into the performance obligations that we just mentioned related to handset as well as the service, we're gonna base upon the proportion of those standalone selling price. So that's how we uh, do it. And finally, step five is when to recognize the revenue. First of all, related to handset, we're gonna recognize the revenue as we deliver it, and we debit the contract asset because by having this asset, or by having this contract, so that I can receive $20 more from you than the normal customers in the marketplace. And as one month has gone by, so we're going to reduce that contract asset each and every month by $24 and recognize the sales revenue for 76 Because for that 76 is where we have adjusted that particular price based upon the standalone selling price where each of these components in turn to the market, uh, to the customers in the marketplace. So that's the reason why we're going to recognize that sales revenue related to the uh, service income of 914 for each and every month as well. Right, so that's how we use the five steps model, okay, to uh, recognize the uh, sales revenue. And in the second part of this course, we're going to detail those step by step, or step one up to step five. So we're giving you lots of examples to see how we're going to uh, deal with these, deal with these uh, detailed bits and pieces within the accounting standard. So see you then. APC, accounting for your future.